Slow down over there, man. Don't take my job. Brody knows he knows about his doves, man. He knows he knows about the sports here in the Bay Area. So we'll do that on the River Islands guest line. We're talking about the history of Oakland and, you know, the part with the statues or whatnot, not doing a good job of embracing their history. One thing about the new Yankee Stadium, and I'm going back there next week when I go on vacation, it's going to be the Rockies in town taking on the Yankees. So I'm, I better get a judge or soda home run in that game on a Sunday morning. Or, hell, they might not even play. Who knows? But they do a great job. The new Yankee Stadium, the first thing I noticed, Shasky, wow, there's Babe Ruth in an Italian restaurant eating pasta. <laughs> wow, there's Mickey Mantle. There's Joe DiMaggio. There's Yogi Berra. They do a good job of just highlighting their legends all around the yard. See that with the Giants. You don't see that with the Oakland A's. Well, like, I look at a team like San Diego who doesn't have the 200-year history that maybe the Yankees or the A's right. or Giants have. And when you go to their stadium, Boom, right smack dab in the, in the beginning, right when you walk in, Mr. Padre. Yep. You know, this huge statue to Tony Gwynn. And I think about it this way, like, when you are sharing a venue that you've been trying to move out of for a long, long time with another team, and you're going back and forth, and you don't own the venue, um, it's, it's, it's like equivalent to you're like a renter that's constantly moving. You're not going to put up a bunch of pictures of your family all throughout your, your, your apartment because you've moved so many times. Like you might put a couple pictures up, you know what I mean? But when right. you, you, you get a home for your family and you've been there a long time and, and people come into your house, you, you've got, you know, family portraits or things that are important to you all throughout your home. And when people walk in, they get that feeling of like, you know, who you are as a family and what you want them to represent. And I just feel like the A's, because of their vagabond status and the fact that they've had one foot out the door for such a long time, they can name the field whatever they want. It was When was it named Ricky Henderson Field? Ten years ago? Five, ten years ago? Something like that. Give or take. Like, but that doesn't. It doesn't hit the same no. way, you know, um, as when you walk into, like you you said, Yankee Stadium, and they've obviously got their own Monument Park and all these Monument different Park, things. And you go into sick when you go into Pac Bell, like coming in, even if you don't come in the main entrance in the Willie Mays Plaza, if you come in on the side, on the wall is painted all of the yep. NL West championships and all the pennants and things like that. And they've, they've just got history of their team and pictures and stuff all spread throughout. And I think about their, their stadium situation, not only has it been a, just a financial, you know, uh, cluster, right? Because it's obviously their reason on why they can't reinvest into their own team. It's also really like downgraded the history of their team yeah. and they haven't been able to embrace those things. And it's just, it's all of these things in totality are why they are so low in the sports lexicon amongst all the other teams out there. They just, they have, they have a history. They don't have a place where they can display it. And I don't feel like they're proud of their own history right. and they're not championing their, their own history within the community. Yeah. You could say rooted in Oakland all you want, but, but you also have to like practice what you preach no, just because you have a tagline doesn't mean you're doing it. Well, that's on Dave Cavill, who I'm not even going to get into today. I'm not going to waste oxygen on him. Um, I want to make this about A's fans. 888-957-9570. Yeah. We don't talk about you much that those are facts. Um, we tried to talk about you for a long, long time, and we wanted that relationship to work. Trust me. Wanted the A's in 95-7 game relationship to work. We talked a lot of A's back then. Hell, when we got preempted with the afternoon delight, I, what I do on my day off, dude, you got tickets for a day game? Because I love pro sports. <laughs> and that was the beautiful thing about having the Raiders here is that every week, for the most part, you had a professional sporting event going on, whether it was the Raiders or the Niners. And that was beautiful. And I love that about the Bay. And now we're not going to have that. We don't have that with football anymore. And now we're not going to have that with baseball as they move up to Sacramento. So I want to hear from A's fans on what this last Bay Bridge series means to you because you can look at the players of when San Francisco moved to the – or when the Giants moved to San Francisco and the A's obviously moving over from Kansas City. Who's had the richer, who's had the richer history? You know, the A's for a long time boasted a lot of championships. And they had the team. They had the players. They had the number one home attendance in the 70s in all of baseball. Oh, look at 19. That's crazy. Look at, look at the 80s. Look at the 80s against the Giants. Look at well, the 90s against the Giants. It's obvious. It wasn't even close. Even, even in the early 2000s, if you just look at the teams that they fielded, I mean, the big three is one of the more iconic pitching staffs outside of the Braves since since what? Right? Like Hudson, Mulder, and Zito were outstanding. 
absolutely and, outstanding. And I think of Chav, uh, Chavez and 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 Tahada, Giambi on that infield. I mean, they were they were a spectacular squad. The the crazy part too is just when you think about the marketing. Those early those big three teams with Boulder, Zito, Hudson. And, of course, Chavez and Tejada and Giambi, and they were going to the playoffs. And <laughs> their marketing campaigns were awesome. Their commercials were great and creative. Chicks they had the billboard, the chicks dig the long ball. They had awesome, awesome commercials. And the Giants were behind them in that aspect. Absolutely. In terms of entertainment and just presenting your product. You, I was taking BART a lot during those days. And everywhere at BART. There was a signage everywhere, Bob Wall Park, Glen Park, you know, Mission Street, Mission the 16th, Mission the 24th. Everywhere you went, a signage everywhere. They were leapfrogging the Giants in terms of that. Where the Giants had Barry Bonds, and obviously that would sell, sell a lot, but the Giants were behind in that aspect with the A's. They were very innovative on how you could get people to come. Remember the root beer float day on Wednesdays? You get, what was it, a dollar uh, dollar root beer float day games? I was just gone, Bart. Well, I lived in Berkeley, just go to a day's game and sit by myself in the outfield, watch some pro baseball. So I, I they've done a poor job. There's no, I don't want to beat the uh, beat a uh, dead horse here. The owner sucks, John, John Fisher. Fisher. It's, it's Dave him. Cavill sucks, his right hand man. They've done a terrible job. He won't come out really unless the interview is doctored up and he <laughs> dictates what he's questions being asked. Yeah, he's, he's, a, a he's a weasel. So I don't really. It's about the A's fan. It's about the A's fan. Have you been able to enjoy the season? Because they got some good young talent right now. I know. Great young talent. You were talking about the commercials. The couple that stick out to me uh, from the early 2000s, Eric Chavez had just won the gold glove. And he had a gold glove, and it was like, like, like yeah. almost like a statue. And he went down to field grounders and went ding, ding, ding off the glove. The other one that I think about is I forget which of the big three it was. I don't know if it was Hudson, Mulder, or Zito, but they would bend over to grab the rosin bag, and all the girls would oh, would make a bunch of noises. I mean, it might not fly in today's day and age, but it was these were like really tongue in cheek, good, fun commercials that made you smile. You know, and, and we just, we don't have any of that. And it, it really honestly feels like that Rob Manfred and all of Major League Baseball, I just don't understand what they're allowing to have happen here. And, and I know that people can say that, uh, you know, it's about the totality of the entire league and they're not going to tell one owner exactly what to do. I mean, it's just a bad look for everyone involved. You're going to be playing in a minor league stadium next year, blistering heat, uh, if they're going to be on turf, I mean, I, go to Twin Creeks and play in 90 degree hurt, uh, heat and your kids are all going to want to have a heat stroke because it's it's it gets really hot. Now playing 110 in Sacramento, like in your the professional level, I, you're asking a lot. And then just to see how little they've reinvested into their own team. To me, it's like I know that Ballmer got his organization seized for him for very, very different reasons. But like, where are the other owners Raising their hands like, we're really going to have to fly in multiple times a year in into this situation and play in these stadiums against this team. I have to continue to cut these guys' revenue checks. I have to share money with them. I have to continue to do this. They're giving us all a bad team. Now, the other side of that coin is, well, they know that they're not a true contender, and then that's just another team you can cross off. I'm a big believer in the, like, Rising tide lifts all boats in the harbor, and I don't understand why other owners across the the, the landscape aren't sitting here going like, "Come on, man, you got you got to make this a little better here." No one's saying that like, like you can't cry broke. We get you're broke, but you've also like you're you're accepting zero responsibility for all the things that you've done to make it worse on yourself. Last dive bar, nineteen ninety nine on YouTube. It all starts and stops with John Fisher at the end. John Fisher. Um, F J F to infinity beyond the last dive bar. I understand it. I understand it. So I don't know where A's fans sit. I look. I, I've been talking about this thing. It feels like for six years now, seven years now, and we kind of knew this day was happening. And now we're getting closer and closer. Today it feels like the Raiders. Well, we knew they were going to Vegas, but then they played next year at the Coliseum, <laughs> and then they played next year at the Coliseum. I was like, wait, what's going on here? Are you going to Vegas or not? Is it over or not? You Is this the last Monday night game or not? You went to that uh, final battle of the Bay. I did as well. It was a Thursday night Thursday game. night football, Nick Mullins game. Yeah. Raheem Oster coming out party. Raider and Niner fans, like, they have a long history. Long history. And I've been to a lot of Raider Niner games, both at the Coliseum and at Candlestick. And that one at Levi Stadium, the final one, 
was just so sad. I remember walking through the entire parking lot, and it was like Niner fans felt so bad for Raider fans, and Raider fans were just so sad that their team was leaving. But you know what? A lot of Raider fans have stuck with the Raiders. Even though they are in Las Vegas. No, no, I'm they not saying that they, them, they, but they, they were I, But they were just sad. Yeah, I no think doubt. they were just so sad. I remember how many, like, fans had their arm around fans of the other, like, it's okay, like, you know, and it just, it was like a sense of sadness. Well, it's funny, too, because the San Jose Earthquakes were owned by John Fisher, and that has been a dumpster fire. That has now been a dumpster fire. I mean, that was a proud soccer club. Proud. Two-time MLS champs, right? And then the stadium, uh, the state, PayPal Stadium, beautiful. Does the AFC it, plays there, and now he's already asking for sweets. The stadium, I don't even think it's 10 years old. Bonsa, bonsa. Does anyone think that the Oakland A's are just going to, like, figure it out in Vegas and go know. from Sacramento for a year and then go to Vegas? Who knows if they're going to end up in Vegas? What? They may still end up in Portland. What? They may, who the hell knows where they're going to be at? You know what? If they went to Montreal, Nashville. Yeah, I don't know where they're going to go. Utah, Salt Lake City. I have no idea. I don't know where they're going to go. I don't know what's going to happen with them. But you know the other aspect of this, too, looking at it from the Giants angle? They've been able or have been unable to take advantage of the situation. That I agree with. To reach the Bay Area fan, the baseball fan, to say, hey, why don't you come over here? We'll be the base team. They failed to do that. They, so if the A's, and that's why it was like the A's had an opportunity to maybe, hey, you know what, let's come back together, let's come to the table, let's figure this thing out, because they could have kept their fan base in the East Bay because the Giants have done nothing, nothing to bring folks to the ball yard. Well, Sam Lubman has been saying, it, like for Giants fans, that like because I know when the Niners were like, yeah, we have no problem with the Raiders leaving Northern California. We'll we'll, we'll take a bigger right. piece of the of the market. You know, we'll have a, a larger slice of the pie. And, and they've they've been wildly successful um, during that time that the Raiders, you know, have been on their way out to leaving. Uh, Sam Lubman has hypothesized that, you know, with the A's leaving, there's really no pressure on the Giants to field a competitive team and win at all costs. It's like, hey, we got the whole market to ourselves. We're wildly profitable. You know, if we just field a, an appropriate team will be able to churn a profit yeah. now i don't know if it's that deep but like that's sam am i am i am i putting it out there the way that no i that's exactly how i feel i would not be shocked if the giants just go forward and being like well you know we played some competitive games in september we got people showing up to the ballpark like that's good enough like when the a's are there there's that pressure of like if you don't win but the a's are winning then it's like, well, come on, what are you guys doing? They got to figure it out. Why don't you have it figured out? Like, let's go. But that urgency will not be there if the A's are gone. Very interesting. I hadn't thought about it like that. But to that point, yes, they have failed. And there hasn't been urgency to get stars in here. Now, I know you're sending Bryce Elger's videos, and we'll talk to Will Clark about him <laughs> um, because he's he's he looks like the real deal. Two yesterday. He, he looks like the real deal. He's a single A, but he looks like the real deal. I, I just, but it's hard for me to get, to get up for prospects right now. I need to see major league talent. Well, yes. It's yes. been six it's been it's been dreadful over the last three years being a Giants fan. Um but A's fans, if you want to call 888-957-9570, it's your time to call. What does this mean to you, the last Bay Bridge series? I I'm so numb to it, Shasky. I wish I could sit here and be like, oh my God. Oh my God, the last Bay Bridge series. What's your favorite memories of the Bay Bridge series? It's just too much. it's just sad. Like they're going to broadcast this game on NBC Sports California and NBC Sports Bay Area. I'm going to be looking at views of the stadium and the seats and the press box and the field and all. Oh, you can't avoid it. The sales shirts are going to be out there. They've boycotted over and over at the Coliseum. It's sad. Like, I can't, I can't get excited over it right now. It's sad. It's sad to what happened to a professional sports team. And it happened right here in our market where we have Silicon Valley. We've got all this money here, real estate, everything. We've got everything in the Bay Area. And this owner refused to invest in his own team, and he just let him rot from the inside out. It's sad. What's his end game? I don't know. To get a free handout, to do his to do the bare minimum <laughs> to run the product to just make sure that he breaks even on his dime. It's money for him. He don't care about the damn team. Uh, it's just, I mean, every the Howard Terminal project, 
the Coliseum project. It feels like everything is a, I have to get over completely and you have to pay for everything. And I need a break on all the taxes and you have to give me the land at a discount. And even then I don't want to put a penny in. It's just like, well, I mean, come on, dude. Like, I mean, she's Louise. You know, and I get the territorial rights with the Giants.